Hi, how's it going? Welcome to Bible School. I'm Andrea, and I'm not the teacher of the series. Vulanam Schaefer is. I just wanted to give you some background on what it's about and what you can expect. A while ago, probably two years ago, when Vulanam Schaefer, who is our pastor, did a series on all the teachings that can be found in the church and which ones are true and which ones are false teachings. Of course, using scripture to back his position. And I learned so much during these teachings that I asked him if he would please redo the whole series in English so that our English listeners can also have access to this information. So if you're Afrikaans and you would prefer to see this in Afrikaans, the link is down in the description below. And if you are English, then the series is specifically for you. So may this bless you in your walk with God. Welcome to Bible School. Good day Warm welcome to Yaswa Radio. I'm your host, Wilhelm. Today we're going to continue with the letter to the church in Colossa. Abba, we thank you for this opportunity to read through the letters that your servant Paul wrote to the churches. We ask that your spirit of truth will guide us in all truth, that you will open your word for us to understand what you, Father, want us to know. And we thank you for your word. Your word is true. We glorify your name. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Saul addressed this letter to the set-apart ones in Colossae and to the true brothers in Messiah. It seems as if Paul did not plant this church. Colossa was situated in the western part of Turkey, on the banks of the Lucas River, part of the trade route. So, last week we read through the first two chapters of this letter. Today, Father willing, we're going to read through chapters 3 and 4. If then you were raised with the Messiah, seek the matters which are above, where Messiah is, seated at the right hand of Elohim. And that is actually something that we as believers need to renew our mind in daily, so that we can seek the matters in heaven and not be concerned of the things of the earth. Mind the matters above, spiritual things, not those on the earth. For you have died, and you, your life has been hidden with Messiah in Elohim. When the Messiah, who is now our life, is manifested, then you also shall be manifested with him in esteem. Verse 5, therefore put to death your members which are on earth, everything that binds you, everything that clogs your mind, everything that wants to move you away from God, the riches of the world, the pleasures of this world. Put it to death. And now you're going to focus on some of them. Worry, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and greed of gain, which is idolatry. Today, a lot of believers think that there's no idol worship anymore. They see idol worship as statues, as trees, as things that you can touch. According to Paul, these things are all idolatry. So what is Saul talking about? He's talking about the works of the flesh, instructions of men and not instructions of God. Warring, he referred to the Old Testament, the Tanakh. That's all they had. There were no other books, no other teachings for them to use. Leviticus 19.29, Numbers 14.33, Exodus 20 verse 14. Uncleanness, Leviticus 5.3, Leviticus 
7, 20, and also 12, verse 5. Evil desires, Exodus 20, 14, and Deuteronomy 7, 25. Greed of gain, Leviticus 6, verse 4. When you do any of these things, you are busy with idolatry. From verse 6, chapter 3. Because of these, the idolatry worship, because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience. The believers that are disobedient to God, in which you also once walk. So the viewpoint and the mindset of the church during that time was that Believers in Yahshua do not sin anymore. They obey the word of God. You once walk in them when you lived in them. Not now anymore. But now also put all of all these displeasure, wrath, evil, blasphemy, filthy talk from your mouth. Wrath. You read about that in Leviticus 19, 17, James 1, 20, Matthew 5, 22, Proverbs 27, 4, and Leviticus 19, 16. Evil, Leviticus 19, 16, and 18. Filthy talk. There's a lot of more verses. I'll just uh, take one or two verses because the word will testify to itself. There will be two witnesses and it will also explain itself. We don't need to make up stories for others to understand the word. The word will explain itself and will testify to itself. Selfie so talk, Leviticus 24, 16, Mark 12, 33, and Luke, um, Exodus 20, verse 16. Colossa 3, verse 9. Do not lie to each other since you have put off the old man with his practices. So everything you used to do need to change. You need to become a new creation, a new creature in the Messiah. One without sin, without blemish, obedient to God, to his word. And have put on the new one who is renewed in knowledge according to the likeness of him who created him. How do we obtain knowledge? Proverbs 2 verse 5. Then you would understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Elohim. What is the knowledge of Elohim? What's the knowledge of God? This you will not obtain in a university, nor can you buy it. Proverbs 2, verse 1 to 5. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you, so that you make your ear attend to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her, a sliver and search if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure then you would understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Elohim so for us to obtain the knowledge of Elohim it is to accept the words of God his Torah his instructions his commandments to learn them so that we can get wisdom, so that our heart can love God, can start to understand who God is, and then we will obtain knowledge. Follow him. Hosea 4 verse 6 confirmed that. My people have perished for the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priest for me. And normally people stop there. 
since you have forgotten the Torah, the instructions of Elohim, I also forget your children. So it's clear that they do not have the knowledge about Elohim, about God, because they do not study the word, they do not obey the word, they do not live the word of God, these instructions. Colossa 3 verse 11. Where there is not Greek and Judahite, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigner and slave, slave, free, but Messiah is all and in all. Now, if you look at that verse, we need to understand that in context. For there is still Greek today and Jew. They still believer and unbeliever. They're still circumcised and uncircumcised. What this means is Yahweh looked to the people through the eyes of the Messiah and he only measured people according to their love. Do they love God and do they love their neighbors themselves? Do they obey the commandments of God? Not for salvation, but in order to have the right standing with God, in order to have everlasting life. Therefore, as chosen ones of Elohim, set apart and beloved, put on compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience. And if we look at those things, you can clearly see that is the fruit of the Spirit. It is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and trustworthiness. So a believer in the Messiah need to put on the Spirit of God to carry the fruit of God. Galatians 5.23, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no Torah, because that is Torah. The word of God is not against those, for that is the character of God. You can also read Galatians 5.14 and Romans 3.8, Galatians 6, verses 2. We're also 3.30. Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, if anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, so also you should. Colossa 3.14 But above all of these, put on love, which is a bond of the perfection. Romans 13.10 Love does no evil to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the completion of the Torah. Love is the obeying of the Torah. Psalms 19 verse 7. The Torah of Yahweh is perfect, bringing back the being. The witness of Yahweh is trustworthy, making wise the simple. So, for wisdom and knowledge, you need to do the word of God. When you put on love, you will obey God's commandments, His Torah, His law, for it is love. Colossus 3.15 And let the peace of Elohim rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be filled with thanks. Colossus 3.16 Let the word of Messiah, that's the Torah, dwell in you richly, teaching and admolishing one another. In all wisdom, singing with pleasure in your hearts to the Master in psalms and songs and praise and spiritual songs. Number 17 and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Master Yahshua. Give thanks to Elohim the Father through Him. 
wife subject yourself to your own husbands as a proper in the master. Husband, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Children, obey your parents in all, for this is well pleasing to the master. All these is instructions taken from the Torah, from God. These are all instructions given by God to Moshe, to Moses, and now given by Paul to the church. Verse 21. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Servants, obey your masters according to the flesh in all respect. Not with eye service as men pleasures, but in sincerity of heart, fearing Elohim. And whatever you do, do it heartedly as to the master and not to men. Verse 24, knowing that from the master you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the master, Messiah. You, sir. So everything you do in your workplace, at home, in your marriage, wherever you are, do it as if you do it for Jesus, for Yahshua, the Messiah. But he who does wrong shall be repaid for the wrong which he has done. And there is no part He who does wrong that means to be unjust, to do wrong morally or physically, socially, and to be an offender. In other words, to disobey the word of God, Leviticus 19.15 and 19.35. If we read Deuteronomy 25 verses 1 to 16, you will get a clear understanding of what Paul is referring to. Let's read verse 16 together. For all who do these and all who do unrighteously are an abomination to Yahweh, your Elohim. No abomination is a, really a harsh word. It's not in a good, to be in a good place, good standing with God. Chapter 4. Glossa from verse 1. Masters, give your servants what is ri um, righteous and fair, knowing that you also have a master in the heavens. Continue in prayer, watching therein with thanksgiving, praying at the same time also for us as a request from Paul's side that Yahuwah would open to us a door for the word to speak the secret of the Messiah for which I am also in chains. So dis despite what they are going through, they ask, pray for us so that we can have the opportunity to preach the gospel. So that we can have the opportunity to tell people about the word of God. So that I make it clear as I should speak, so that they can understand what to tell people. Walk in wisdom. Well, we already see wisdom is obeying the word of God. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. Redeem the time. You can read Deuteronomy 4 verse 5 and 6. Glossa 4 verse 6. Let your words always be with favor, seasoned with salt, so that you know how you ought to answer each one. Chikin costs, who is a beloved brother, a true servant, and a fellow servant in the master, shall give you all the news about me. I am sending him to you for this purpose. So he will go, most probably be the deliverer of the letter, but I'm sending him to you for this purpose, to tell you how I am doing, to know your circumstances and to encourage your hearts. With 
Onesimus, we also read about him in another letter that Paul wrote, a true and beloved brother who is one of you. So he also came from the same area from Colossa. They shall let you know all the news here. From verse 10. Ariscos, my fellow prisoner, greet you with Mark, the relative of Barnaba, about whom you receive instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. Also, Yeshua, who is called Justice. In Hebrew, um, there's no J, it's a Y, and there's, uh, and therefore, if you spell the words in Hebrew, a lot of words can mean exactly the same. Yeshua, Yeshua, Justice, etc. These are my only follow workers for the reign of Elohim who are of the circumcision. So they are Jews that believe in the Messiah and they are believers now with Paul and also ministers of the gospel who are to me a comfort. A paparast who is one of you is also a Turk. A servant of Messiah greets you, always wrestling for you in prayer. So he's a, a, most probably an intercessor and he's praying a lot for the church, for the believers in the Messiah. Always wrestling for you in prayer so that you stand perfect and complete in all the desires of Elohim. For I bear him witness that he has a deep concern for you. So I testify on his behalf that he have a deep concern for you as for those who are in Lodosia and those in Iropolis. Luke, the beloved physician. So now for the first time we heard about Luke and later there was a, a book written by Luke and that was very interesting as one of the, as they call it, Gospels. But there's only one Gospel. But this one, Luke wrote this one after he obtained a lot of testimonies on behalf of Paul for a court case. And that's what is very interesting is he's a um, physician. Uh, and he's the only one who wrote about the the virgin birth of Yahshua. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brothers in Laodicea, sorry, Laodicea and Numpa, and the assembly that is in his house. And when this letter is um, read among you, see that is, it is read also in the assembly for the Laodikians, and that you likewise read the letter from Laodikia. So they must exchange letters and say to Archippos, see to the service which you have received in the master so that you complete it. This greeting is in my own hand. So remember my chains. Favor be with you. Amen. In most of the letters, there's this verse or, or this part where Paul says, I'm writing this now in my own handwriting. And there's various reasons, most probably for that. Maybe he couldn't um, see that clearly anymore. That's why it's always written a lot bigger and the rest of the letter was most probably um, written by somebody else, but it's the words of Paul. What prophecy is being fulfilled by Paul's ministry to the Gentile nations? Jeremiah 31 verse 10. Hear the word of Yahweh, O Gentiles, and declare it in the Eilish afar off, and say, 
He who scattered Israel gathered him and shall guard him as a shepherd his flock. Also Mecca for two. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and let him teach us his way, and let us walk in his path. For out of Zion comes forth the Torah and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. So that's the prophecies. That's the word of God spoken through the prophet. And now Yeshua sending out the people to the Gentiles to teach them the Torah, to teach them the word of God, the law of God, the instructions of God. We can also read Leviticus 24, 22. It clearly states there is one law for all. Abba, thank you for your wonderful word. Thank you for your spirit of truth, Ruach HaMes, that will reveal your truth to us so that we can understand your heart and your word, Father, so that we can be free and set free from bondage of teachings of men. We glorify your name, Father, in Yahshua, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.